vibrant history of Japan, few figures stand out as vividly as Miyamoto Musashi. But beyond his legacy as a swordsman, Musashi's teachings hold profound wisdom for anyone seeking unshakable confidence. In the chaos of today's world, many of us struggle with self-doubt and uncertainty. But what if the secret to unyielding confidence was found in the way of the samurai? Musashi was not just a master of the sword, he was a master of the mind, and his philosophy, articulated in the Book of Five Rings, offers us timeless principles for building inner strength. Musashi's life was a testament to the art of continuous growth. He was not just confined to the mastery of the sword, but delved into painting, sculpture, and writing. His philosophy was clear. To stop learning was to stop living. Today is a victory over yourself of yesterday. Tomorrow is your victory over lesser men, Musashi wrote. This wasn't just about outdoing others, but about surpassing one's own previous limitations. In our modern world, it's easy to fall into routines, to believe that once our formal education is over, so is our time for learning. But this couldn't be further from the truth. Today, the resources at our disposal are vast. Online courses, workshops, books, mentorships, opportunities to learn are all around us. Embracing them not only adds to our skill set, but fosters a mindset of adaptability and resilience. True confidence, as Musashi suggests, comes not from what we already know, but from our hunger to know more. From acknowledging that every day brings a chance to learn, to grow, and to become a better version of ourselves. Allocate a portion of each day, no matter how brief, to learning. Whether it's reading a chapter of a book, practicing a new skill, or simply observing the world around you with curiosity. In the grand tapestry of life, those who weave new threads of knowledge and experience create the most vibrant patterns. Musashi was deeply attuned to the rhythms of the world. He observed that everything, from the fiercest duel to the gentlest breeze, had its own pace, its own beat. To him, understanding these rhythms wasn't just a philosophical musing, but a tactical advantage. Recognizing the pace of a battle could mean the difference between victory and defeat. Musashi wrote, If you know the rhythm of the enemy, you will know the rhythm of a thousand things. This insight, while rooted in combat, transcends the battlefield. Our lives today, though vastly different from Musashi's era, are still governed by rhythms. The ebb and flow of our routines, the cycles of our emotions, even the patterns of our interactions, all are rhythmic in nature. By attuning ourselves to these rhythms, we can move with greater grace and intention. When we feel overwhelmed or out of sync, it's often because we're resisting life's natural tempo. But what does it mean to understand rhythm? It's not just about observation, but immersion, to dance, rather than just watch. To be an active participant in life's melodies rather than a passive listener. Practice stillness and listen, whether through meditation, mindful walking, or simply sitting in nature. The rhythms are there, waiting to be understood. In the symphony of life, each of us has our own beat, our own rhythm. By understanding it and the rhythms of the world around us, we navigate our journey with greater confidence and purpose. Musashi, while acknowledging the transient beauty of life, cautioned against becoming ensnared by its fleeting allure. He understood that true mastery and depth come from dedication and focus, not from scattered pursuits. He once wrote, There is nothing outside of yourself that can ever enable you to get better, stronger, richer, quicker, or smarter. The essence of this teaching, the pursuit of external validations and distractions, can lead us astray from our true path. Today, the world presents an even grander stage of temptations, the promise of instant gratification, the allure of the new and novel, the siren call of endless entertainment. But at what cost? While there's no harm in occasional indulgence, a life dominated by frivolous pursuits can lead to a sense of emptiness. It's the difference between depth and breadth, experiencing many things superficially versus deeply engaging with the chosen few. Musashi's life epitomized the latter. By diving deep into his arts and skills, he achieved unparalleled mastery. His path wasn't one of deprivation, but of purposeful choice. Periodically evaluate your pursuits. Are they enriching your life or merely filling time? Remember, it's not about renouncing joy, but discerning which joys truly resonate with your inner self. In a world bursting with options, the true art lies not in chasing everything, but in discerning what truly matters. In Musashi's words, perceive that which cannot be seen with the eye. Look beyond the ephemeral and seek the enduring. Train the mind and body as one. For Musashi, there was no distinction between the body and the mind. They were two halves of a unified whole. He believed that the discipline of the body was intrinsically tied to the discipline of the mind, and vice versa. 
In his relentless quest for mastery, he wasn't merely training to fight. He was training to exist, to live, to be. The synchronization of his physical movements with his mental focus was his magnum opus. In our times, it's easy to see the mind and body as separate entities. We often exercise our body at the gym and our mind through books, treating them as isolated parts. But true harmony arises when they come together. Musashi's teachings remind us of the ancient traditions that blend the two, Tai Chi, Yoga, Aikido. These are not just physical exercises, but deeply spiritual and mental practices as well. But it's not always about movement. Even in stillness, one can achieve this unity. Meditation, often perceived as a purely mental exercise, can be deeply physical. The posture, the breathing, the sense of being grounded, all play a role. Much like a tree, we too have our roots in our reach. The body grounds us, holds us to the earth, while the mind allows us to dream, to aspire, to reach for the skies. In Musashi's worldview, neglecting one is neglecting both. Don't fear your adversaries. Each duel was a dance of death, yet his philosophy towards his opponents was unique. He respected them, but he never feared them. For Musashi, every adversary was a teacher, a mirror reflecting back his strengths and vulnerabilities. By respecting them, he wasn't just being honorable, he was being wise. Our world today is competitive. Everywhere we turn, there's someone vying for the same goals, the same dreams, but how we perceive these competitors can shape our journey. Seeing adversaries through the lens of fear can be paralyzing. It can cloud judgment, impede growth, and prevent us from taking risks. Fear places the focus on losing rather than learning. However, seeing them with respect transforms the scenario. It acknowledges their strengths but also empowers us to rise to the challenge. Respect emphasizes mutual growth and the pursuit of excellence. When faced with a challenge or competitor, take a moment to recognize their merits. Ask yourself, what can I learn from them? How can this interaction make me better? Musashi believed that by respecting an opponent, you elevate the duel from mere combat to a dance, from brute force to artistry. It's a shift in perspective where the goal is not just victory, but growth and evolution. In our journey through life, we'll encounter many who challenge our beliefs, skills, and aspirations. But by viewing them with respect instead of fear, we can turn each encounter into an opportunity, every challenge into a lesson. Seek solitude. In a quiet, misty morning in a dense bamboo forest, there's a stillness in the air, broken only by the subtle rustling of leaves and distant bird calls. In his lifetime, Musashi often retreated from the noise of the world, seeking solitude to refine his craft, reflect on his experiences, and pen his philosophies. For many, solitude is equated with loneliness, but for Musashi and many sages throughout history, solitude was a chosen sanctuary. It was a space for introspection, a canvas for the mind's deepest thoughts and the heart's rawest emotions. In today's hyper-connected world, where we're constantly bombarded with information and distractions, the value of solitude has never been more pronounced. Yet ironically, it's never been more elusive. But why seek solitude? Isn't human connection, interaction, and community what we thrive on? Indeed, community is vital, but it's in solitude that our deepest thoughts emerge, unfiltered and unchallenged. It's where we confront ourselves, face our doubts, and nurture our dreams. Solitude provides a haven, a retreat from the external world, allowing one to reconnect with one's innermost self. Miyamoto Musashi's life was one of fierce battles, but his lasting legacy is one of inner strength, discipline, and profound wisdom. By embracing his teachings, we too can build a kind of confidence that's unrecognizable, rooted not in arrogance but in deep understanding and mastery.